Hello Year 8 and welcome along to the next in our algorithms and programming section. So already this term we've looked at how you plan an algorithm using a flowchart uh, and hopefully you've planned your medical program ready for today. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're actually going to start building part of your medical program. So yours might be different to everyone else's. I'm going to give you an example today. You can either use my example and almost copy its structure or if you've got an idea of your own, try and build your own and I will try and help you along the way. Okay, so we are going to be using sculpt.org or whatever online Python interpreter you've been using. That's absolutely fine. So here's my example. So mine's broken down into really three main sections. The first part where we look at uh, what illnesses can we tell them about. So I've got a print and welcome to DigiDocs. So that's just going to be the first thing that's when they run the program, it prints welcome to DigiDocs. Remember, of course, DigiDocs is just the name of my program. I've made it up. Now, the second line here, we've got illness equals input. And it says choose an illness from the list. And then you've got forward slash n cold forward slash n flu. Now, forward slash n just gives you a new line. So it means that that code will be in a list. So I'm telling the um, user what illnesses they can choose from. I've only got two. You could have more, but to fit it all on one screen, I've just done two. Now you'll see here, this is an input. That means that the user, the person using the program, can actually type a response. So to make an input, we just type input in our variable, and then we can write a prompt as well. So my prompt is choose an illness from the list, cold, flu. Once they've typed it and they press enter, we want the program to check to see what they've written. We want to see, have they written cold or flu, or have they written something else? If they've written cold or flu, this is the code that's going to work. So we're going to say, if illness equals equals cold. Remember, a single equals is an assignment operator. Two equals means equals. So if what they typed in, so remember the input is called illness, so if what they typed in was cold, then I put colon, and then indented, so moved away from the side by pressing tab, it says print, and then I've got a whole load of information about colds there. So I went and did a bit of research and found a bit of information about colds. So if they type in cold, it will give them that information. Okay. They could also type in flu, and there's a bit of code that I'll show you for that in a moment, but it's the same sort of structure. It says elif illness equals flu, and it prints the information about flu. If they didn't type cold and they didn't type flu, then and there's nothing on your list, then you're going to want to give them a different message. So anything else is print, please restart and choose an illness from the list. So it tells them you didn't recognize it, start again. Let's have a look at the whole program all in one go, shall we? So I want to share this with you. Here we go. So you can we can see the whole program now. We can run through it a line at a time. So I've added a, a bit of extra code onto here that I'm just going to remove because we don't need it in your example. Make it as simple as we can. So we've got this first part. Program runs, remember, from top to bottom. So first thing it does is print welcome to Digitocs. Then it asks them for their input and gives them the list. So choose an illness from the list. Then we've got the first check. So it checks if what they wrote, if illness, is the same as cold. And remember, I've written it all lowercase, so they'll have to write it all lowercase. Print cold symptoms can come on gradually and can include blocked or runny nose, sore throat, so on and so forth. So it will print that information. If they didn't write cold, the next check it does is elif. Remember, elif is short for else if. So elif, what they typed illness is flu, then it's going to print all that information about the flu. If they typed anything else, if they didn't type cold and they didn't type flu, it then prints restart and choose an illness from the list. You'll notice I haven't written else illness equals. Else is everything else. Okay, so we've got if elif if we wanted another one so if i let's say i had uh, headaches in there we'd say elif illness equals equals headaches uh, okay no, colon. Oop. No, colon there okay 
then I would have to print and I'd go away and I'd research some information about headaches but for now what I'll do is I'll just put uh, a placeholder so I'll say information about headaches okay so obviously in, in the real program I'd have to replace that with actual information but for now that will that will do for me uh, I need to add headaches to my list so let's add that in here oh no I need to make sure that I'm consistent here so I need to make sure that actually I put it all in lowercase so I'll put it in lowercase here as well okay let's run this program and see what we can see so I'm gonna run module yep I want to say that's fine okay let's get that up on screen for you guys so you can see it otherwise it's not going to be very useful for me talking through it when you can't see it okay here we go so you can see it says welcome to Digidox that's my print welcome to Digidox choose an illness from the list you've got cold flu and I've got headaches that I've just added so if I test it out by typing in uh, cold and you can see it prints out all that information and then ends the programs so all the information I'd included let's check my headaches one so run module okay so let's try typing in headaches and then it, at the moment it types information about headaches and I want to replace that with actual information so that's worked there is one improvement I'd like to make because as you'll have seen when I was typing there it actually showed on the same line where uh, as my list so when I typed in headaches it, it was next to the word headaches I want to go down to the next line before they type in so I'll show you how to do that now so back to my code and right here at the end of my list I want a new line so I'm going to put backslash n and that'll just mean that their input goes onto the next line let me show you what I mean by that so run the module okay so now it's run look when I oops, when I type my input it's actually typed on the next line so I can type in flu and it doesn't look as odd as typing it next door to it so and there you go it types all the flu symptoms out like that perfect let's just do one more test before we finish I'm going to run it one more time let's type in something else so let's type in um, I don't know cough okay and it says please restart and choose an illness from the list okay so I've checked my program and it's working as I expected right I'm now going to pop this on the screen for a minute and I'm going to disappear myself um, so that's I'm going to leave this on screen for a minute just so you guys have got a chance to have a look at it and make sure you understand it or you can use this as the structure for yours. So if you're not really sure what to do at this point, take a look at this code. You can pause the video and you can use this as your guide. Equally, if you've written some code and it's not working as you expected, you can compare it to mine and see where the differences are so you can see where you might have gone wrong. Okay, that's plenty of time for you to pause it, so I'm now going to go back to our show, and I can come back. I'm allowed to come back. There we go. Right, so. Bronze is to follow the example. It's on the screen again there, uh, but follow the example to create your code. So if you're really not sure what to do, follow my structure. That's fine. Um, Silver is to create a selection of choices for the user. So rather than just having two, try and build up a bit of a, a bank of choices. Gold is to debug your errors and find solutions through research. So it might be that while you're doing some of your code, it doesn't work and you need to uh, do a bit of research to find out what's gone wrong. So that would be very impressive if you do your own research. That's a gold. Uh, the challenge is add additional research to your program. So instead of just following my structure, add some extra bits in so that it works the way you want it to work okay as i said we're going to use sculpt.org or anything uh, any other python interpreter online that you've used what you 
may need to do if you're going to work on it and then go away and then work on it is actually copy your code into a Word document, save the Word document so then when you want to come back to it, you can paste it back into Sculpt and carry on working on it. Okay, so you're going to have to save the code in a Word document and copy and paste it backward and forward. Now, I'm going to give us, we're going to have two weeks on this. So there will be a lesson next week, but really the lesson next week is going to focus on me helping you guys to understand your program and to try and debug. But as I say, if you're really not sure, use mine as a template. Build from mine. And then next week when we're on our live lesson, we'll, I'll be there to help you out uh, looking at your code and give you a bit of feedback. Okay, guys, all the best. And I'll see you again soon.